Eric Jensen, author of Brain-Based Learning, once said, any stimuli introduced into our immediate environment, which is either new, novel, or of sufficiently strong emotional intensity and high contrast, will immediately gain our attention. Why is that? Why is our brain wired to look for the new? And why does it filter out things that are boring, routine, repetitive, and predictable? Well, our ancestors needed to easily sense changes in the environment. Danger, wild animals, changes in the weather. When everything was the same, they could actually relax and zone out or get on with their day. When something was different, it could be a sign of danger. They needed to be on high alert. It could be a matter of life or death. So how does your brain prioritize the important stuff? It uses the RAS or Reticular Activating System. That's a long name for a very small part of the brain. All your senses, except smell, are wired to this bundle of neurons. The RAS is sometimes called the pinky brain because it's the size of your little finger. It's like a nightclub bouncer for your brain. It decides what gets in and what doesn't, so your brain's not overwhelmed. Your senses take in way too much information for you to be conscious of it all. So your pinky brain filters it so you only get the most important info. If you drive to work each day, ask yourself this. Have you ever arrived at work or home and realized that you weren't paying attention to where you were the whole ride home? You may even wonder, how'd I get here? That was your pinky brain at work, filtering out your boring routine drive so you could think about other things. But if something novel happened, like a car swerving into your lane, the pinky brain would have sprung into action and yelled at you to wake up, stop, pay attention. So how can we use the pinky brain to get students to pay attention? We could focus on four things the pinky brain loves. Novelty, contrast, meaning, and emotion. Novelty. Anything new is going to stoke the pinky brain's interest especially new ways of learning and class activities students are not used to. Contrast. The brain will be alert to changes in the learning environment. It notices contrast between two different activities or topics. It also pays extra attention when something is different than they expect. Meaning. When you make your topic personally meaningful to your learners, the brain will sit up and take notice. Students care more about the topic being meaningful to them than to you or the institution. Relating the topic to their life, situation, interests, or values can be very powerful. Emotion. Ever wonder why storytelling is such an incredible learning tool? It's because the brain loves emotions, both positive and negative ones. The more emotion a story or lesson has, the more memorable. Tapping into emotion also allows learners to pay attention longer. If the topic is exciting or emotional, they'll be on the edge of their seat waiting to hear more. Logic alone can't do what emotion can to make the brain pay attention and care. Of course, there is a limit to how many differences you can sustain during a class. Too much change can make students anxious. Too little could leave them bored. You'll need to find a balance, but in most cases, students need more novelty, contrast, meaning, and emotion, not less. So look at your lesson plans and think about ways to implement this learning principle that brains love.